Hey there, folks. I'm Mark, in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse. And I don't know, why does this week feel both muted and contentious? Well, anyway, this, it's Billboard Breakdown. I don't remember. So as of this week, we're over halfway through the Billboard year for 2023, and I can't be the only one who's kind of underwhelmed, I've been saying that all goddamn year, but I also get the odd feeling that in the next couple of weeks we're going to see some major shakeups, especially away from all those major releases that haven't seemed to have the staying power you might expect. I think some ones with punch are on the horizon. Now this week feels pretty straightforward, if a little bit busier than I expected, but hey, I guess I'll cake normalcy over disaster, if you catch my drift. Even if some of the songs that debuted, well, we'll see. But you know what? Nowhere is that stability more apparent than in our top 10, where barely anything even moved, and that includes our number one, Last Night by Morgan Wallen. At this point, I'm honestly not sure what can really beat it. It's dominant on streaming, strong sales, radio still gaining, and that's not something I can say for Kill Bill by SZA at number two, which might have better radio, but is bleeding there fast, and it's not coming close on the streaming margin. Similar case for Flowers by Miley Cyrus at number three. More radio inertia, but the streaming margin is a lot more pronounced. Still was enough to hold over Ella Bella Sola by Esla Bon Armando and Peza Pluma at number four. Great streaming can really only hold up so much when the radio has been excruciatingly slow to get on board. Now it does have enough to hold over Calm Down by Rina and Selena Gomez at number five, where it looks like it may have reached a gentle peak on the radio and in streaming. A surge here is probably very unlikely, but at least it's something somewhat stable compared to Creepin' by Metro Boomin, 21 Savage, and The Weeknd at number 6, which just spent the week bleeding airplay with even less streaming in order to back it up. Then we have Un Por Ciento by Grupo Frontera and Bad Bunny at number 7, and I gotta admit I'm torn on this one. I expected this to make a proper run, and on streaming it really is, but the radio is really slow to move, and even with Bad Bunny's cosign, I'm not sure it's gonna have a ton of penetration here. But we do have one new top 10 entry, Favorite Song by Tusi at number 8. Again, I'm also kind of torn on this one too. To me, it becomes across like the marketable, accessible version of what Rod Wave does better, and it's clear from the airplay gains that the radio agrees, but apparently he's also got streaming there too, so there might be more groundswell than I expected. Hell, I just wish I liked the song more. But it was enough to elbow past Die For You by The weekend down to number 9. Let's be real, that's been on its way out for a while. And holding up the rear, we got Antihero by Taylor Swift at number 10, which had a bizarrely good radio week, but that might just be an anomaly. I expect this is going to be gone soon, as I've been predicting. Speaking of which, our losers and dropouts. In the latter category, let's be real, the only one that's kind of worth mentioning is Bloody Mary by Lady Gaga, which might just barely make the year-end list for 2023, as well as BZRP Music Sessions Volume 53 with Bizarre Rap and Shakira falling off the charts yet again. Although, shout out to Dawn's by Zach Bryan and Maggie Rogers falling well short, but doing frankly way better than it had any right to on the Hot 100. As for our losers here, well, nobody's really taken to Double Fantasy by The Weeknd and Future, so it's down to 51. Peaches by Jack Black is also continuing to lose down to 99. And Wreckage by Nate Smith doesn't look like it's caught on, so it's at 96 off the debut. Now the other losers, well, Handle on You by Parker McCollum is getting pulled fast after it had its radio peak so it fell down to 47, and Love You Anyway by Luke Combs slid down to 52. Although now that it's getting a slight radio push, it could well rebound in the future. We will have to see. But now on to our returns and gains, and there are no returns, and a pretty limited list of gains, all things considered. All relatively easy to explain too for once. Karma by Taylor Swift continues its single push at number 35. Eyes Closed by Ed Sheeran saw that album boost to 19, even if it probably won't last. And and Tennessee Orange by Megan Maroney also saw a nice bump up from her album to 30. The one surprise that came with Wild as Her by Corey Kent up to 40, but this week it also got a major radio push. It'll be curious how much of that will translate to actual traction going forward, if it can actually get any higher. But minor as any chart movement seem to be, we do have a sizable list of new arrivals. So let's get things started with number 98, What It Is Block Boy by Dochi featuring Kodak Black. Every black boy needs a little love. If he put it down, I'ma pick it up, up, up. 
Well, it'll leave me in a difficult position right from the jump. Because as an up-and-coming artist on TDE, especially coming off her EP, She, Her, Black Bitch from last year, I have been rooting for Dochi. And yet, apparently because acts from TDE have given Kodak Black an open pass, it's his presence that helps this cross over and chart. And, and yeah, he's easily the worst part of the song, given how he can barely stay on beat for his verse, and he's playing up the dominant block boy who wants the girl a half step behind him, and that's the last thing I want to hear on a Dochi breakthrough song. But it's also not the only problem with this. For starters, Dochi is a spitter. I don't know why the hell they're rolling her out with this push of a thug's knee love joint that places her predominantly in the back seat and then samples some cut by Trillville with that tinny oily synth, the cheap sounding snare, the staccato piano chords, and a trap groove that should hit way harder than it does. Yes, Dochi can croon over this and the hook is good. I like how her backing vocals are layered, but I don't like how this came together. I think it's criminal mismanagement. From TDE, well, I used to expect a lot better. Nowadays, I'm not so sure. Number 97, Curtains by Ed Sheeran. I mean, I'm not surprised that this is the one song from Subtract that seems to be catching more attention on the charts. It's the most upbeat song on the album. It's got a very sunny, attempt to be optimistic vibe. The percussion groove is more developed and busy, but it ramps up effectively into a song with a bit more rock presence in the guitars, where there's even some fuzz guitar. Yeah, the vocals are overcompressed for my personal taste. It's kind of a niggling issue across the entire album. And I do think this song could have used a proper bridge to really drive it home. The song feels a bit incomplete, but Ed Sheeran knows how to sell this with the right sort of intensity, depicting a conversation between two people trying to find the right words to say to step out of the shadows, climb free of depression and sadness however they can, if only for a very brief snapshot. I don't know, I think the song is great. And while it's not my favorite from this album, especially in the wake of that Life Goes On remix with Luke Combs that should be pushed as a single, it's absolutely excellent. But you know what, I'm just fine with this getting some traction. Check it out. Great song. Number 92, Shake Some by the Baby. Make the ghetto bitches put their hands on their knees. Make the ghetto bitches put their hands on their knees. I don't know how to dance but can lean. Make the ghetto bitches put their hands on their knees. Make the ghetto bitches put their hands on their knees. Make the ghetto bitches put their hands on their knees. Hey, look, everyone. The Baby's charting again by hopping on a Jersey Club instrumental that's barely two minutes long that went viral on TikTok. I can practically smell the desperation from here. Now, with all that in mind, I actually do like the instrumental. The bombastic synth horns, they build up pretty well against the pulsating groove. And while like most Jersey Club, it feels a little bit incomplete without stronger percussion in the mix, it fits that whole loud, sweaty vibe that DaBaby seems to be trying to create. Or at least I thought it would work, but there's something about DaBaby here that feels weirdly flat to me. He doesn't have that flair or vigor that he used to flaunt so easily, and the bars sound like they were thrown together in 15 minutes, lacking any of the distinctive humor that he used to have. I mean, there's no charisma. He sounds almost bored, and that's the wrong attitude for this. Now, there is a part of me that's curious if he could pull away from this downward slide, and this may have had potential, but again, not nearly as good as it should be. Number 90, Mathematical Disrespect by Lil Mabu. Okay, what the fuck is this? For those of you who don't know, Lil Mabu is a spoiled rich white kid from NYC who runs a promotional venture, I'm assuming with daddy's money, who likes to cosplay as a street kid making drill in the most shameless way possible. The sort of shit Jake and Logan Paul used to make back in 2017, with the full knowledge that the teenage white boys who comprise his audience do not remotely care if you're not legit if your beat goes hard enough, where every bad line becomes mimetic because... It's designed to be. I can hear the marketing from here. So the line's about making money while he pees, dissing other drill rappers by saying the only deals they take are pleas, and then him immediately copying a plea to the NYPD by saying that he's a complete liar and he didn't even write anything, and then goes into a bunch of truly cringeworthy sex references that include trigonometry, stopping the song midway through to explain a bad color punchline, and what I personally find most notable, 
Call her Virgil, because the way she be blowing, shit got me dead. That's a line that will ensure the sniveling troll remains unsigned and probably sees at least one major ass whooping in the near future. In the meantime, it's barely 90 seconds of a stock drill beat with no hook. Like 6ix9ine, this kid wants the reaction, but in reality, he is a witless, also ran approach to provocation on a truly atrocious song. It should be gone by next week. We do not need to acknowledge this mewling dweeb any further. Move on. Number 88, You, Me, and Whiskey by Justin Moore and Priscilla Block. Okay, now onto something that has to be marginally better than that. All right, how about Justin Moore following up on a single from 2021 for a project this year with this duet from six months ago with an artist who never really seemed to get her career going properly. And while I actually think these two have some pretty decent chemistry, Priscilla Block has some tangible presence on the song. And for a smoky reconciliation track with Whiskey where there's a lot of history that hangs in the background, there was some potential. But the first thing that came to my mind immediately was, man, this reminds me of an underpowered Never Say Never by Cole Swindell and Lanny Wilson. I mean, it's got the same awkwardly programmed percussion that isn't really needed, just stick with live drums, same back and forth interplay on the verses, same weirdly filmy but oversold production, but I actually liked Never Say Never, whereas I'm not sure the atmosphere ever really comes together with this song. There's less conflict. Why not at least try for some subtlety, build some romantic atmosphere maybe? I don't I don't know. There was a time when I had way more anger for Justin Moore, but this is just too forgettable to hate. Let's move on. Number 83, Major K.O. by Annual AA, Mambo Kings, and DJ Luian. Okay, so according to my sources, the big reason this is charting at all is tied to breakup drama from two years ago. Annual AA dedicated this new song to Carol G, even despite the fact that Carol G is now dating Fide. For what it's worth, I think she upgraded across the board. And now he's got this reggaeton attempt to maybe win her back. For what it's worth, I actually think the percussion here has more texture and presence than your stock reggaeton beat against the faded woodwinds. But the major problem with Annual AA is that he's got very very little in the way of distinctive vocal personality on this scene. I've been saying that for years. Whereas on this song though, he tries to make up for it by over explaining all the ways of how Carol G is still totally into him and how Fide can't satisfy her in the same way, where the level of detail and pettiness on naked display is even off a of translation, it's wild. But it also just comes across as really whiny and I don't care enough about this dated drama to want to humor it that much further. At least the beat's good. Next, number 66, Religiously by Bailey Zimmerman. Just to stop the hurt, cause I don't have the only woman who was there for me religiously. Honestly, don't have a lot to say about this one. I just reviewed Bailey Zimmerman's new album on my main channel, and while I have liked the majority of his singles, the title track is one I can take or leave on any given day. It's certainly twangier with the banjos against the touches of heavier percussion and the pedal steel, and Bailey Zimmerman can sell regret reasonably well given how it was his fault that this all fell apart, but it feels really clunky to lean so hard on that word religiously, both in terms of lyrical construction and the underlying sentiment. I mean, of course he wants to focus on that one girl who loved him religiously. It's really melodramatic framing to crank up the stakes, and I'm not sure he can quite sell it yet. I mean, I don't think this is bad either, but it's easily his weakest single thus far. Pass on it. Number 59, Go Hard by Lil Baby. No one can get next to me, so they gotta put artists in. Try my best to act like I didn't care, but I can't hold it in. And I'm not in the losing, I go hard as I can go to win. So apparently Lil Baby is coming with another album at some point this year, maybe. Feels kind of likely, given how his last project didn't seem to leave much of an impact compared to the older songs of his that went viral that same year. And that gave me a worried feel about this, which was leaked back on Instagram back in May of 2020 when he was dancing with James Harden. But hey, go back to the well, see what works. The sound hasn't precisely moved on yet. And you know what, to his credit, it's probably one of Lil Baby's most memorable cuts in recent memory. He 
he sounds more engaged against all the hazy pianos and while the percussion the bass and the vocal mixing is clipping the mix there is an intensity to little baby's tighter flexing and threats that feel somewhat credible granted he's doing it while criticizing his ops's feminine ways and talking about how he on his drive-bys he wants someone dead he's Board of drive-bys even, and the rest of the flexing lacks the inspirational framing that helped him be a little bit more interesting in the scene overall. But you know what, if this back-to-basics approach is what he needs, it's not the worst thing, especially if it feels like a properly complete composition. It's not especially good. I'm not going to call it bad either, though. And finally, number 54, Area Codes by Kali. Codes. He know what's up. Everywhere I go, every time I pop out. Okay, context. The original Area Codes with Ludacris and the late Nate Dog is a ridiculously fun, braggadocious song that's all about having groupies all over the world. The guitar groove is phenomenal, Nate Dog, of course, sounds amazing, and Ludacris remains one of the best out of the South to ever do it. I especially liked how he said, Stop the violence, go have sex. That's just good praxis. But I'll be real, Word of Mouth came out over 20 years ago. I'm not against a gender-flipped version of this song, especially as Kali is an up-and-comer with roots in both California and Georgia. Makes sense. Now, unfortunately, I don't think this lives remotely up to the original, mostly on the production. It's extremely minimalistic, there's no tune to this beyond the bass beat, the occasional subtle effect, so all the groove is gone. But Kali at least gets the casual, lightly humorous vibe for fleecing a bunch of tricks for all they're worth. And there is a tightness and control to her flow that can really sell that. Her delivery reminds me of a more refined and focused Lotto, but again, her flow is a lot better, and I can see this kind of working in a spare mid-2000s throwback sort of vein and hell I grew up with that it's not bad hell honestly considering how rough the rest of this week is otherwise with the new arrivals yeah fuck it she's getting the honorable mention and curtains by Ed Sheeran is the best this week worst I mean it's no contest mathematical disrespect by Lil Mabu folks let's try to give this guy precisely zero attention after this week he's just not worth it but dishonorable mention I mean, I like Dochi, but what it is, Blockboy is such a calamitous misstep in production and bringing in Kodak Black that, despite the good performance, I never want to hear that song again. Next week, I mean, I guess we'll see the fallout, because I don't see the major release schedules disrupting it much. We will have to see. But until then, I'm Mark. You're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.